Let us be glad and rejoice in it. For college is a place of beauty where people are offered opportunities for new beginnings and possible becomings, a place to build knowledge and character. Colleges reveal the latent and particular beauty implanted in each soul. As a member of this beautiful place, it is my honor to welcome you to Greensboro College, where educators draw out that inherent grace of soul, causing it to shine forth so brightly in our students' lives. I extend that welcome to all here today and all off campus listening to these proceedings. For you are witnesses to this community rite of passage where Dr. Lawrence Dean Zada will be installed as the 18th president of Greensboro College. Today, our community joins together to commit ourselves to the future of Greensboro College a commitment expressed through the inauguration and celebration of this institution. To showcase just some of the gifts of our students, faculty, and staff, our ceremony will be filled with the beautiful music of this place. In fact, two pieces have been composed specifically for this occasion by music faculty members, Professor Neil Clegg and Dr. David Fox. Many others have been involved in the organization of today's inauguration ceremony and celebration as faculty, staff, students, alumni, and trustees all had representatives on the planning committee. Student volunteers have also provided our guests with a warm Greensboro College welcome throughout this day. And so, we are thrilled that so many guests have joined us to share in this special celebration. Welcome to all. Reverend Dr. Robert Brewer, our campus minister, will now lead us in our opening prayer. Let us pray. O oh God, our help in ages past, our hope in years to come. We come today to give you thanks and to acknowledge what is already true for us that grace abounds and sustains us, that not love never leaves us, that we are never alone. We acknowledge today your strength and love that has been with us in our trials and uncertainty in the past few years. We acknowledge your grace in times we needed forgiveness and compassionate hearts with each other and with those we feel have hurt us. We acknowledge your spirit that has sustained us and our lives and has carried us like a mother carries and protects a child. Thank you for never letting us go. Thank you for never abandoning us to our lost ways. Thank you for giving us hope for a better tomorrow. We thank you, O oh God, for the leadership of our trustees, our faculty and staff, our coaches, our students, and especially our administration and our new president, Dr. Lawrence Zarda, and his wife, Carolyn Chapel. Bless them, keep them, strengthen them in the days ahead. They will certainly need it. May they always be aware of your ever-present grace and your unending love, and may we offer ourselves in service to this college and its future, and to the future of our community and world. Help us, O oh God, to believe where we cannot see. Help us to trust you to take risk, to embrace others, and to share our gifts with the world. O oh God, you are our help in these our ages that have come to pass. And you are our hope in the years that are to come. And today we acknowledge that in all that we've gone through, in all that we go through, in all that we will go through, we will never be alone. We pray all of this in the strong name of the one who loves us, who redeems us, and who goes with us always. Amen. Please remain standing and join in the singing of the national anthem, which will be led by the men's a cappella group main attraction.
Please be seated. We have a number of special guests joining us today. When I call your names, please stand so that we may recognize you. Senator Howard Lee, representing Governor Beverly Perdue in the state of North Carolina is with us today. Senator Lee, thank you for being with us. Dr. Brent DeVore, immediate past interim president of Greensboro College has joined us. Dr. DeVore, welcome back. Ms. Nancy Nikki Furrow, immediate past volunteer for everything worthwhile at Greensboro College. <laughs> and wife of interim president DeVore is here. Welcome back, Nancy. Dr. W. Barnes Tatum, Jefferson Pilot Professor of Religion, Emeritus, and a former interim president. Dr. Tatum often claims that his best quality has been his good sense to be associated with Linda Tatum, his wife, and we never disagree with Dr. Tatum. <laughs> Ms. Tatum, would you please stand? <laughs> Mr. Fred Jones has joined us today. Mr. Jones was appointed as part of the executive team upon the departure of Dr. James Bar Barrett, the 15th president of the college. Mr. Jones. Please rise so we may thank you. <laughs> Current and former members of the Board of Trustees, would all of you please rise to be recognized? <laughs> Your effective and active stewardship of this institution is always appreciated. Thank you. Members and past members of the Alumni Association Board and the Board of Visitors, would you now stand? <laughs> For your continued ambassadorship and goodwill to this institution, thank you. Several of Dr. Zada's former colleagues from George Mason University have made the trip to witness this inauguration. We welcome you to our campus, brothers and sisters, but please note that we have hired extra security guards today in case you try to take him back. <laughs> Would you please rise to be recognized? <laughs> there are several members of the Zada and Chapel families who have joined us in this celebration. Please stand so that we may give you a warm, familial Greensboro College welcome. Thank you for supporting Dr. Zada and Ms. Chapel, and for understanding all the demands that we will continue to place on both of them. Welcome to the Greensboro College extended family. We are graced today by the presence of representatives from other institutions of higher education. Will the honored delegates from our esteemed sister colleges and universities please stand. We have with us today two delegates representing prestigious organizations that are central to our mission and goals. Since they are from outside academic institutions of higher education, they deserve our special welcome. Representing the world's foremost leadership development organization, please welcome Mrs. Mona Edwards, Vice President and Chief of Staff of the Center for Creative Leadership. and representing the General Board of Higher Education and Ministry of the United Methodist Church and a former staff friend from our accrediting body, the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools, Commission on Colleges, please welcome Dr. Gerald Lord. Thank you both for being with us today. And to the students, faculty, and staff, who every day create and recreate in Greensboro College a place of beauty, knowledge, and character. Would all of you please rise to be recognized.
It is customary during presidential inaugurations for the communities associated with the college to deliver greetings to the president. Today we have a number of friends who will honor and continue that tradition. I will introduce all of our distinguished guests and after I am finished introducing them, I ask them to speak in the order listed in the program. Joining us today in the platform party is Dr. Richard Mays, Jefferson Pilot Professor of Biology and College Marshal, who will extend greetings from the faculty. Dr. Mays is the senior ranking member of the Greensboro College faculty. The Reverend Dr. David Melton, senior pastor of West Market Street United Methodist Church, the church that gave birth to Greensboro College through the labors of the circuit writer, Reverend Peter Dowd. Reverend Dr. Melton. <laughs> Mrs. Jean Edwards Jones, alumna of the class of 1958, president of the Greensboro College Alumni Association, and a lover of this beautiful institution for over five decades. Mrs. Jones. <laughs> Professor Jean Loiko, Greensboro College Athletics Director, women's volleyball coach, and dedicated member of this community for over 30 years. Professor Loiko was selected by the Staff Affairs Committee to represent the staff of Greensboro College today. Professor Loiko. <laughs> Ms. Brittany Carroll, a junior majoring in English and Communication Studies and Student Government Association President who is also active in religious life activities, the Funky Bunch Chapel Band and several other campus groups. Ms. Carroll. <laughs> Mr. Jamar Tyree, senior music major and senior class officer who recently won two first place awards at a National Association of Teachers of Singers competition in the classical category and the musical theater category. And when I say regional, that's seven state. That's a big deal. <laughs> Mr. Tyree. <laughs> Mr. Walter Newton, first vice, first vice chair of the Greensboro College Board of Trustees. Mr. Newton served as chair of the presidential search committee that brought Dr. Zada to us. Thank you, Mr. Newton, for your discerning leadership. <laughs> we welcome today the Honorable William Knight, mayor of the city of Greensboro and supporter of this college for many years. Mayor Knight. and Bishop Larry Goodpastor from the Western North Carolina Conference of the United Methodist Church, our spiritual guide and supporter. Welcome, Bishop Goodpastor. It is my privilege today to stand in for Dr. Carter Paik, our board chair. His able leadership has brought us successfully to today's celebration. So, Dr. Zarda, I bring you greetings on behalf of the Greensboro College Board of Trustees. Today we celebrate the inauguration of GC's 18th president, which happens to be you. As chairman of the search committee, a word of thanks to the committee members who worked so hard to bring us to this day. Job well done. A word of special thanks goes to Dr. Royce Reynolds, who funded the search process, past president of Shenandoah University. Dr. James Davis served ably as our search consultant with academic research. We thank Jim for that leadership. Our circumstances required that we hire an interim president, before that happened, Dr. Paul Leslie filled the chair as acting chief executive officer. His admonition to me was, hurry up. <laughs> Paul, thank you. Our interim search brought Dr. Brent DeVore, the recently retired president of Otterbein College, into our lives. Brent and Nancy, we remember your time amongst us warmly. Thank you. Mark Twain in The Adventures of Tom Sawyer gives us this fitting passage for today, and I quote, 
Tom appeared on the sidewalk with a bucket of whitewash and a long-handled brush. He surveyed the fence and all gladness left him and a deep melancholy settled down upon his spirit. 30 yards of board fence, nine feet high. Life to him seemed hollow, an existence but a burden. The challenges in higher ed are truly daunting. But like Tom, with a lot of imagination, the hard work of us all, Larry, with your leadership, we will meet those challenges. While a native of New Jersey, Larry, you've demonstrated great wisdom in moving further south with each career move. <laughs> you, you and Carolyn need move no further south. You have found paradise. You, you were each destined to be North Carolinians. Our state motto is essay. Is essay quam videre. To be rather than to seem. You and Carolyn live that motto. You both on many occasions demonstrate the love and commitment you have for students. The quiet dignity, grace and good humor that you each bring to the work of the college inspires us all. Thank you, congratulations. We look forward to working with you both. And like Tom, we will get that fence painted. Dr. Zarda, I bring greetings to you from the faculty at Greensboro College. As the representative, it is my privilege and pleasure to welcome you on our behalf. During the past year, we have come to appreciate your incredible energy, capacity for hard work, and sense of humor. We are impressed by your leadership style, emphasizing honesty, transparency, and collaboration. Last spring, upon your arrival on campus, you met with various college constituencies and asked thoughtful questions. That helped you get to know Greensboro College, both its virtues and eccentricities. One of our college's strongest assets is our faculty. James Thurber once said that it is better to know some of the questions than all of the answers. This statement reflects our dedication to the college's mission, to teaching, and to the tradition of liberal arts education. We believe that the quality of an education lies in the relationships developed in classrooms and laboratories, in rehearsal spaces, on playing fields, and through community service. We hope that our new president would share this vision. It is now apparent that you do indeed share our commitment to these philosophies. You have demonstrated that dedication by your desire to teach, your concern for the quality of academic programs, and your frequent statement that college and its experiences should always be all about the students. This is a challenging time for education institutions at every level all across the country. The economic downturn has increased competition for those students able to afford higher education to a level I have never seen in over 36 years of teaching. Regardless of size, affiliation, or whether they are in the public or private sector, institutions of higher education are threatened with financial instability. An individual willing to accept the college presidency at this time must be tenacious, experienced, strongly motivated, and of course, have the optimism of a lifelong Cubs fan. A, sm a smattering of superhero powers wouldn't hurt either. We are fortunate to have found these qualities in Lawrence Zarda. I recently asked Dr. Zarda what attracted him to Greensboro College. He responded that several things strongly influenced his decision to come here. Among them, our mission, our size and emphasis on liberal arts, our strong and dedicated faculty, church affiliation, and our student-centered educational philosophy. Dr. Zarda, like many of us, believes that working in academics is not merely a job, but a place and a purpose he desires at this time in his life. He is convinced that his experience and skills match our college's present needs. During the past year, I have come to agree with him. President Zarda, the faculty welcomes you and your wife, Carolyn, to our educational community. We look forward to working in tandem with you 
to enhance the legacy of our college. <laughs> He's a little afraid of mine, I think. <laughs> Dr. Zarda, I bring you greetings from the staff at Greensboro College. Having served Greensboro College in both a faculty and staff role for over 30 years, I'm honored to have been selected to represent some of the finest, most hardworking, dedicated, and caring people on any college campus. They truly are the nuts and bolts that bind this great institution together. Last spring, I had the, at the Athletic Awards Convocation, I had the opportunity to introduce Dr. Zarda to the student athletes, all these young men and women that are sitting up there. At that point, I introduced him as the newest rookie on our staff. Dr. Zarda, as a rookie, you were thrown in the role of cleanup hitter. This is a role that requires great strength, vision, courage, and the ability to get things done when the pressure is on. This reminds me of a story of the oil well fire in a small Texas town. This oil well fire had been raging for three days, and all the big fire departments couldn't put it out. They had get about 200 yards from the fire, and they couldn't go any closer. So the oil uh, well owner decided he'd offer a million dollars to anyone that could put the fire out. So this little small town fire department, volunteer fire department, decided they were going to give it a try. So they had this little you know, fire engine. All it had was a ladder, bucket of sand, a couple of buckets of water, and a, and a blanket. So here they come approaching the fire. They get to the 200-yard barrier, and they keep going, and the crowd's cheering. And they get to the 100-yard barrier, and they keep going. And they get to the fire, and they jump out, and they throw the bucket of water on, the couple of buckets of sand, and they battle the fire with the with the blanket and miraculously they put it out. And the oil, you know, everybody's cheering. The oil well owner comes over to the chief and he's dusting himself off. And the oil well owner gives him the million dollar check and he goes, what do you plan to do with the money? And the chief said, well, the first thing is to get the brakes fixed on that truck. <laughs> Strength, courage, and the ability to get things done. That's what those firemen did. And frankly, I think right, if you look around our campus right now, we're getting some of the brakes fixed also. Now for your vision for the college. That too is becoming apparent. In the book, Alice in Wonderland, you know Alice is lost in Wonderland and she's walking down the road and she comes to a fork in the road. And she gets there and she doesn't know which way to go. And she looks up in the tree and there's the Cheshire cat, you know, that big grin on his face. And she looks up and she says, which road should I take? And the Cheshire cat goes, well, where are you going? And she said, well, I don't know. And he says, well, if you don't know where you're going, then any road will get you there. At Greensboro College, we've been going down many roads. But with your vision, Dr. Zarda, we now know which road to take. You have provided us the vision to reach our dreams. In Plato's seminal work, The Republic, he gives us the notion of the ideal leader, the philosopher king. This is the man who possesses the perfect marriage of a philosophical mind and an ability to lead. As Plato wrote, quote, I need no longer hesitate to say we must make our guardians philosophers. The necessary combination of qualities is extremely rare. Our tests must be thorough. For the soul must be trained up by the pursuit of all kinds of knowledge to the capacity for the pursuit of the highest, higher than justice and wisdom, the idea of the good. I have seen the good and believe that Greensboro College will prosper in the future because of it. Greensboro College has gone from a place of despair to a college of hope. We have goals that can be reached. We have plans that can be developed and we have people that care, and we have a president that can lead us to the championship. Dr. Zarda, 
in the immortal words of all those great sports fans, you demand. Greetings, Dr. Zarda. Today, I am honored to formally welcome you to Greensboro College on behalf of the student body. Though I am just now formally greeting you, you have been here for almost a year, and we've noticed your impact on this school. Your positive attitude has uplifted us and made us proud to be students at Greensboro College. Since you arrived, you have been very visible and engaged, which has touched our lives in tangible ways. By attending student events, you showed us that you are willing to be more than just a president, but also a friend, and we take that to heart as a student body. I won't soon forget the time where you participated in the Wii Sports competition at an event that you and your wife hosted for Village 401 and Religious Life. Instead of standing off to the side, you jump in and participate as well. I think you might have even won. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you have also made changes around campus. From the smallest of changes, such as the sidewalk repairs and landscaping, to the new ID system that is in the future, as well as more prominent changes in the future. However, the biggest improvement all this year, and the one that the students are most grateful for, is the cafeteria food. <laughs> From your actions and positive attitude, as well as your love for Christ, it is very easy to see that you care about the experience and personal well-being of each and every student at Greensboro College. Thank you for all that you have accomplished and all that is yet to come. Picture it. Fall of 2010, campus move-in day, but I don't remember which one. I pulled my car into the hill loading dock near the post office and found myself blocked in by another car. The lady standing next to the car sweetly said, we're waiting on the key or something like that, and I just shook my head. <laughs> As the driver got out of the car to apologize, I quickly recognized him and jokingly shouted out, hey, president, didn't they give you a car or a par parking spot or something? Well, he and I laugh, and I'm glad he thought that was funny. And that day, <laughs> it could have went another direction. But <laughs> that day, I made a new friend. Dr. Zarda, I bring you greetings from the Greensboro College senior class of 2011. Woo -woo. <laughs> President and First Lady Chappell, I want Chapel, I think I said that right. I want you two to know that we were all waiting for you through some of the most uncertain times this institution has ever seen in many years. We were all waiting through the budget cuts, the resignations, and the embarrassing news reports. I even remember a year ago sitting at the lunch table with my friends discussing transferring to another school. You could literally feel the loss of hope all around the campus. Then there was Dr. Zarda, this kind of short man with the friendliest smile and a very soft-spoken wife. They were kind of everywhere. They were in the cafeteria, they were at basketball games, corral concerts, concerts, poetry readings, musicals, and anything else they could support. This was really new for us students. Most of us didn't even know what our former president looked like. I, for one, thought he was Paul Leslie. <laughs> But Dr. Zarda and Mrs. Chapel, if I may speak on behalf of the GC senior class and say, we don't exactly know what happens behind the door of a boardroom. We don't know the conversations that fly from email to email discussing important business affairs of the school. What we do know is that the two of you cared enough to become engulfed in our lives. You have gotten to know us, the students, and whether anyone tells you or not, each student feels more connected to this school than ever before because of you. Thank you for everything you've done, everything you're doing now, and everything you're going to do in years to come.
Dr. Zarda, I bring you greetings from some 9,000 plus alumni living. <laughs> and many of our many board members who are with us today. So glad you're here. We have a great board. And four of those living members are in my family, so I have to say that. Now I continue with apologies to Dr. Seuss. We alumni are women and men from far and near, doing good things in the world, we hear. Because of the care and quality of education on campus in classes with smaller registration. Faculty and staff always better than most you are finding as you assume this post. You won't be able to spend time in repose because there's work to be done, goodness knows. <laughs> the dining hall's great with salad and roast, GC special, pizzas, but no green eggs with toast. <laughs> the cooks prepare food you like to eat and are really great with veggies and meat. The dorms where we lived were guarded, not scary, for we were never afraid, at least not very. Maine, Greensboro, Hudson, Men's and Fitz, Hill Hall and the Inn, not one the Ritz. <laughs> but home they were for students we met and made lifelong friends the best one can get. As our alma mater words we will sing, let you know of the love we bring. To thee, GC, we lift our praise. We'll cherish thee through all our days. Whether Emerson, Irving, Hornets, or Pride, we alumni stand with you for your GC ride. A very warm and heartfelt welcome to you and Carolyn. On behalf of Dr. Craven Williams, I will read his letter to us in recognition of this occasion. I regret that Judith and I are unable to attend today's inauguration ceremony. It is my pleasure to extend greetings to those in attendance and to salute Dr. Lawrence Zada on the occasion of his inauguration as the 18th president. To serve as president of Greensboro College is an honor and a trust. Dr. Zada takes his place amid the shadows of those who have gone before, who have nurtured the mission, heritage, and values of the institution since 1838. His commitment to that mission, his respect for that heritage, and his total devotion to those values will assure the continued confirmation of the institution as a living and learning community worthy of imitation and adulation. Sincerely, Craven E. Williams. And on behalf of the Honorable Howard Coble, who is unable to be with us today, he mentioned something about having to work on some little budget situation. <laughs> I don't know what he was talking about. But anyway. Dear students, faculty, staff, and friends of Greensboro College, on behalf of the citizens of the 6th District of North Carolina, I would like to extend my welcome and hearty congratulations to President Lawrence Zada on his inauguration day. Greensboro College has long stood as a beacon of academics, and I am so very proud of the college's numerous achievements throughout the years. Today, with great pleasure, I honor Dr. Lauren Zada as Greensboro College's 18th president. I am most certainly sure his many talents will have a tremendous impact on each student's educational experience, as well as the future of the college in the years to come. I would like to thank Greensboro College for all your hard work in educating young minds. Your impact is truly invaluable and continues to pave the way for brighter and even more educated American minds. Again, congratulations to you, Dr. Zada, on your inauguration day. I extend my best wishes for an outstanding event, and I am so very proud to join you in paying tribute to the future of Greensboro College upon this historic occasion. 
Sincerely, Howard Coble, Member of Commerce. Good afternoon, distinguished guests, members of the Greensboro College faculty, staff, alumni, and fellow members of the community, and I might add with a word of pride, Bishop, fellow members of Christ United Methodist Church who are here. But uh, thank you. <laughs> I always enjoy the visit, the, the opportunity to visit this campus, beautiful campus, and it is truly exciting to be here today to witness the inauguration of the 18th president of this fine institution, Dr. Lawrence Zarda. The city of Greensboro is unique in many ways, but one of our greatest dis distinctions is the fact that we have seven colleges and universities that make their home in our city. Not only do these institutions of higher learning forge sound minds and contribute to the education of tomorrow's leaders, but they each contribute a great deal to our city's quality of life, to our workforce, and to our local economy. Greensboro College is one of our flagship colleges, and I'm excited about the addition of Dr. Zarda. We welcome your interaction in the community, and I know from my previous conversations I, that that's there. And we look forward to his continued leadership as he guides Greensboro College into the future. It is evident to me through his involvement at his church in the community through Action Greensboro and through his devotion to his family that he is indeed a man of action. I know that as he works to take Greensboro College to new heights, he will also work to build the institution standing in the community and beyond, and we welcome your leadership in guiding vision in the city. So congratulations on this momentous occasion and on behalf of the City of Greensboro, welcome, and as Professor Loyko said, you the man. <laughs> Dr. Zarda, I bring you greetings on behalf of the United Methodists of the Western North Carolina Conference. In more than 1,100 churches and with more than 295,000 people, we stand committed to higher education. Among our five institutions that uh, make their home within the bounds of this conference, but particularly on this day for Greensboro College, it is a joy for me to have had an opportunity to visit with Dr. Zarda and to begin to forge new relationships and new understandings in our commitments to one another. The Methodist movement has, from the very beginning, been committed to education, starting with our spiritual founder, John Wesley, and his deep commitment to higher education in his own uh, work at uh, Oxford at, in England, but also a commitment to children, to young people, and almost from the very beginning in America, as the Methodist movement began, we started colleges, starting at West Market Street, Greensboro College stands in that grand heritage. It is a joy for us to begin to think about what that means for the 21st century. On behalf of all of us who are United Methodist, we are committed to higher education because we're committed to our young people and to the future. William Butler Yeats wrote at one point that education is about lighting a fire. The faculty at Greensboro College, the administration, Dr. Zarda, light fires in the students so that the world can be a better place because of graduates from Greensboro College. On behalf of the United Methodist Church, we congratulate you, we extend our prayers, and look forward to our continuing relationship. Well, the last few minutes have been fun. Um, I'd like to be serious for a few moments, and so I will. Um, Dr. Zarda, 
It's my honor and privilege to bring you greetings from West Market Street United Methodist Church, the congregation I'm proud to serve as senior pastor. This greeting comes from the congregation that, under the leadership of Methodist pastor the Reverend Peter Daub, some 173 years ago, because of the need for educational opportunities for young women, established this wonderful college. From the beginning, Greensboro College quickly began to make a name for itself. It was the first college to open its doors within the town from which it draws its name. It was one of the first colleges established for women in the United States. As an aside, a college established only a year earlier calls itself the, on, the oldest college for women in both the United States and the world. From its beginning and all during its rich history, Greensboro College was and has continued to be committed to progress and excellence. In a region that is known for the excellence of its institutions of higher learning, Greensboro College continues to stand out as a leader in many areas, including providing an excellent, well-rounded liberal arts education for all, including some of those who would not have such an opportunity at some other less astute and compassionate institutions. Dr. Zardiff, there are a number of reasons this day is a personal privilege for me. This is a strategic moment for both the college and the church that birthed it. West Market has always been proud of the relationship it has enjoyed with the college it established. For the last eight years, it's been my personal honor to serve that relationship in the capacity of trustee. During much of that tenure, I prayed that my role and the role of West Market might be significant and transformational. Dr. Zarda, several representatives of the West Market Street Congregation were proud to serve on the diverse and multifaceted search committee that narrowed its focus from the more than 90 outstanding candidates, many of whom were incredibly gifted and experienced individuals and leaders in their own right before making you a finalist and then bringing you to campus. Trustees, faculty, staff, students, distinguished guests, it was upon the ensuing visit that Dr. Zarda and his outstanding wife, Carolyn, made to this campus that the wise, energetic, passionate, and well-rounded finalist before us today separated himself from other polished and credentialed candidates and became the unanimous choice of the search committee to become Greensboro College's 18th president. Trustee Chairman Carter Pate, search committee chairman Walter Newton, other representatives of both the college, city, state, and region, and guests. There's another reason for the privilege it is for this moment for West Market. Since Larry and Carolyn's arrival here in Greensboro last year, they have served as committed disciples and servants of Jesus Christ in and through the ministry of West Market Street United Methodist Church, the church home in which they have chosen to act out their faith in Jesus Christ, something they have already done with great commitment. Dr. Zarda, you are the latest in a long line of superb Greensboro College presidents. I have every confidence that you will carry on Greensboro College's proud tradition of achievement. And so from the congregation that gave this wonderful institution its beginning, we salute you and your family on this proud day and look forward to serving with you in the many productive years that lie ahead. Our next musical selection was commissioned by the Inauguration Committee and composed for this occasion by Dr. David Fox, Associate Professor of Music. Its premiere will be sung by the Greensboro College Chorale under the direction of Dr. John Brotherton, Professor of Music, and accompanied by the composer, Dr. Fox.
As you can see and hear, Greensboro College is indeed blessed by the gifts and talents of our students, faculty, and staff. It is now my honor to, to introduce to our college a man with many talents of his own, our inauguration speaker, Major General Henry M. Mack Hobgood. General Hobgood was born in Oxford, North Carolina, and graduated from high school in 1960. He attended North Carolina State University, graduating with a Bachelor of Science degree in education and a commission through the Air Force Reserve Officers Training Corps. He was a distinguished graduate of the Air War College and later earned a Master of Science degree in personnel management from Troy State University and a Master of Science degree in school administration from Shenandoah University. General Hobgood served in a variety of command and staff positions throughout his military career. His assignments were primarily in the human resources and education training components of the United States Air Force. He served in the Air Education and Training Command, the Strategic Air Command, the Pacific Air Forces, and the Air University and the Air Combat Command. General Hobgood last served as the commander of the Second Air Force and retired from active duty in 1996. Unable to stay in active retirement for very long, General Hobgood became the ninth president of Randolph-Macon Academy in 1997. Since then, he has led the academy during a time of significant quality enhancements to that institution. He served on the board of directors of the Virginia Association Independent Schools, is past president of the United Methodist Association of Education Edu Institutions, and past president of the Association of Military Colleges and Schools of the United States. He is currently a member of the Board of Trustees of the Virginia Council for Private Education, chair of the board of Warren Memorial Hospital, and a member of the Rotary Club. General Hobgood is married to the former Carolyn Ann Royster of Oxford, North Carolina, who I understand is with us today, and I'd like her to stand to be recognized. Welcome, Ms. Hopkins. Mac and Carolyn have one daughter, Cynthia, a marketing and communications director in Washington, D.C. Would you all now please extend a pride-filled welcome to General Mac Hobgood. Thank you very much. It's uh, great to be with you today. Uh, so good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Bishop Goodpastor, Mr. Newton, Mayor Knight, Senator Lee, Dr. Lord, Dr. Zard, and Mrs. Chapel, staff, faculty, and students of Greensboro College. Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity to join you in this significant celebration of your new president and the renewed commitment to the values which Greenberg, Greensboro College holds dear. It's great to be back in North Carolina, where I was born and raised and attended school. You know that other school, the one down in Raleigh? Some of you may have heard of that one. Our travels with the United States Air Force, in our travels with the United States Air Force, Carolyn and I have missed the good old North Carolina traditions. Some are only found here, as you know. Barbecue, <laughs> banana pudding, and oh yes, sweet tea. As all of us Tar Heels know, these treats are only found in the great state of North Carolina. And of course, the people here are kind and they're considerate and they're real. And they speak and understand that special language, Southern. And so I'm delighted to be here with you and to be back home in North Carolina. Several weeks ago, I thought about what I should say and how long I should talk, and I was given my allotted 12 minutes, I think. And I decided that I could do it in half the time. 
And after hearing the wonderful remarks from the platform speakers today, and I might add, particularly the students, they, weren't they great? The young man who's a senior, someone better hire him right away. <laughs> so anyway, I decided to make my remarks brief. And I am so delighted that I did because there's no way that a Southern boy like me could top the wonderful remarks that have been already made today. But I'll give it a shot. First and foremost, please, allow me to personally confirm the wisdom of the Board of Trustees' decision in selecting Dr. Larry Zarda as the 18th president of Greensboro College. I've known him for the past 10 years as a parent of children at Randolph-Macon Academy, and as a colleague and as a friend. Dr. Zarda is a solid citizen and, edu and an educator of significant depth. He is a good father and he is a good man. Larry is a natural leader who sees the big picture, but he's not afraid, as you have already learned, to get his hands dirty doing the little things that make a difference running an institution like this. Above all, in my view, Larry Zotter is a compassionate man of God with a strong moral compass and the energy to handle the many challenges of leading this institution. Mr. Newton, you and your colleagues could not have done better in my view. By the way, as has already been mentioned, and I want to again salute that, Larry did not come alone. And I believe this is equally important to having a good president, you have to have the support of a great spouse. Carolyn Chapel qualifies in spades. She too is an accomplished educator, she is a teacher at heart, and I might add, she also knows how to lead. You will discover that. And as you've probably already learned, Carolyn is a warm and caring person who will be with Larry every step of the way at this great institution. I will make a bold prediction. They will lead this institution for many, many years to come. The institution will prosper and you will love them. As the president of a small private Methodist school, I understand the task at hand for Dr. Zarda. He has the privilege and the honor to serve as the leader and steward of a college that stands solidly for the intellectual development of its students through a progressive liberal arts educational program. In essence, Greensboro College is in the business of developing students, of developing in students the ability to think, the ability to reason, and the ability to express themselves verbally and in writing. That, in my view, is job one. Unfortunately, these simple but powerful concepts are less common in American colleges and universities that some of us would like to admit. Additionally, your strong focus on math and science and awareness of the world around us will serve the graduates of this institution well beyond college life. So in my view, Greensboro College has its foundation correct and its sense of values and its culture all important. Dr. Zarda and the Board of Trustees fully understand the relationship between exceptional faculty and capable graduates. It's a universal truth that good teachers and good teaching make the difference in the lives of students. So while we celebrate your wonderful president today, we also understand the critical role of teachers at your school and all of our schools, and of course, the importance of students at your school. They are central. So I know while providing a first-class liberal arts education, Greensboro College is also committed to the character development of its students. Now please don't misunderstand me here. But my strongly held view 
is that the time and energy this institution spends on ethical behavior and on character development of its students will have the most significant impact in their lives. It is critical that this school continue to concentrate on providing a quality education in all disciplines so the graduates are ready for our competitive and shrinking world. However, character and all that it entails will ultimately determine the success or failure of your graduates. And I know that you have it right. Greensboro College understands that character matters. There are a number of United Methodist Church leaders with us today and thank you so much for being here and for your leadership and for giving all of our schools a solid moral compass. Let me be clear, our affiliation with the United Methodist Church has never, ever been more important than it is today. This is a relationship that I value at Randolph-Macon Academy, and I am sure, likewise, it is valued at Greensboro College. An interesting side note, maybe a small thing, but big in my life, I happen to keep a, a copy of a book of discipline, Bishop, on my desk, and I refer to it frequently for helpful instruction. It is very difficult to live by, but it's very helpful, and it is my guidepost for running my institution. In this regard, I am confident that Larry and Carolyn will provide the institution, this institution, the kind of character-based leadership that the students deserve and need. So in closing, I wish Greensboro College and Dr. Zarter all the best for continued success. This is already a terrific college, and now you have a strong and capable and visionary leader who will bring you to an even higher level of achievement. This institution, in my view, is in great hands. May God bless Dr. Zarter, Mrs. Chapel, and may God bless Greensboro College. Thanks so much. Thank you, General Hobgood, for your words of wisdom. We know that under the leadership of Dr. Zada, that I can assure you that this college will remain vigilant about academic quality for the sake of developing the complete character of our students. We're so very grateful for your presence today. Our next musical selection highlights the talents of the Greensboro College Gospel Choir under the direction of Mr. Jamar Tyree. I may have mentioned that he recently won two very prestigious uh, awards from the uh, National Award. Okay. Um, Jamar.
the bad news is you have to listen to me again. <laughs> it now gives me great pleasure to ask Miss Carolyn Chapel, retired middle school principal, high school history teacher, now doctoral candidate in higher education administration at George Mason University and wife of Dr. Zada to join me on stage for a special presentation. Thank you, Dr. Leslie. Um, one of the things that we decided to do as the Zarda and Chapel families was make a special uh, dedication of something that the college could use to commemorate this uh, 18th presidency. So uh, with some advice from folks who knew what the college needed, let's see if I can do this, we dedicate and make gift of the seal of the college that will permanently stay on this podium. So in years to come, people will remember the 18th president of college, Lawrence D. Zarda, my husband. Thank you, Ms. Chapel. Before you leave the stage, though, I understand this is an important day for you in many ways. So we have a special presentation for you. Dr. Fox. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Dr. Zada, soon after you arrived at the college, you had a special sign made for your office that reads, it is always about the students, and it hangs there today. When we saw that, our sense that you had the right stuff to be a successful president of this institution was confirmed. And so, we have another special presentation in honor of your inauguration. Ms. Haley Hicks, a junior biology major, participant in the George Center for Honors Studies program, and the student representative on the inauguration planning committee. Will you now come forward to make your presentation? It's a very loud stage. I should have worn flats. <laughs> Good afternoon. Um, over the past year, Dr. Zarda has done a tremendous job of making himself known to the students of Greensboro College. We know that he's dedicated to improving the college community as a whole. I'm here today to express the gratitude and support that we students intend to show to you, Dr. Zarda. It is my honor and pleasure to present to you this plaque that represents a donation from the students to the college fund as a gift in honor of your inauguration as the 18th president of Greensboro College. Mr. Newton and Dr. Zada, it is now time for you to come forward in the presence of all here to state your leadership intentions in concert with the affirmations of this community. And so, on behalf of all the people of Greensboro College, I invite you to come forward for the official installation ceremony. Please stand together and join in this responsive litany, which is found in your program, responding as part of the community or communities to which you belong. We have gathered here today to affirm Dr. Lawrence Dean Zarda, who has chosen to serve as the 18th president of Greensboro College. I am pleased to publicly acknowledge his gifts and celebrate his inauguration as president. Therefore, at this time, I am prepared to hear the affirmations of the college community. As members of the Board of Trustees charged with the overall governance of Greensboro College, what is your response? As the community of educators, administrators, staff, and students of Greensboro College who have daily and varied responsibilities on campus, what is your response? We 
As United Methodist ministers, bishops, and laypersons who have committed yourselves to the work of the church in higher education, what is your response? As Greensboro College alumna who love and support the college, what is your response? As members of the Zarda and Chapel families, with your unique role in supporting this president, what is your response? <laughs> Dr. Zarda, you have heard the affirmation and support of the people assembled in this place. In light of these affirmations and support, are you prepared in the presence of the witnesses gathered here today to commit yourself to this new trust and responsibility. Mr. Newton, I covenant with the college and those gathered here to faithfully execute the duties of the president of Greensboro College. With God's grace and with the help of this community, I will seek to provide visionary leadership that will help Greensboro College fulfill its unique and compelling mission. Dr. Zarda, may you dignify your office with wisdom, leadership, devotion, compassion, hospitality, and godliness, and so fulfill the confidence we have placed in you. We pledge to you our praying hearts, discerning minds, and supporting hands that we may live together unto the praise and glory of God and the betterment of humankind through our commitment to this academic community. And now, with the full confidence of the Board of Trustees, joined by the affirmations of all those gathered here today, we believe that you will continue to lead this college with wisdom and courage. Dr. Lawrence Sarda, in the presence of God and this gathering, and by the authority of the Board of Trustees, I declare that you are the 18th President of Greensboro College. We entrust you to God's never-failing direction, care, and love. I now place the, place the Greensboro College Presidential Medallion around your shoulders as an outward symbol of your office, your responsibilities, and your devotion to the college. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor and privilege to present our 18th president, Dr. Lawrence Dean Zarda. Please join me in congratulating him on this historic day for Greensboro College. This day is not about me. It is about us. It is about the legacy and promise of a remarkable institution of higher education in its 173rd year. I add my thank yous to so many of you today for the kind and support of introduction and comments you have made from this platform. I also thank the inaugural committee that broadly was representing faculty, staff, students, administrators, alumni, and of course, our fine music department. Thank you. Thank you for the lifetime of commitment, contribution, service, and leadership by General Hobgood. For the extraordinary quality of the Greensboro College music faculty and staff and students that you heard today and will continue to hear for the rest of the afternoon. For the commitment of time and travel for all of the delegates from other institutions that have come here today. 
for each and every one of you to be here today, I thank you. And of course, those from the Mason Nation and my family. Yeah. <laughs> Gerald Panos, a well-regarded writer on matters of higher education in the presidency, says in a recent book that once you accept the offer from a board of trustees to become that institution's president, you should pause and give thanks that on life's merry-go-round, you have caught the brass ring. You have accepted one of the most significant, rewarding roles imaginable. But also say a prayer and ask for the prayers daily from anyone who might support you, as these positions are among the most demanding and challenging imaginable, true at any small private college. The board and search committee, with great fanfare, announced that after Herculean efforts, they have found the new president that matches oh so well exactly what the college needs. They will be here to help you. They will be here to support you. But really, it's up to you now. Good luck. <laughs> At a recent conference of private college and university presidents, noted Harvard scholar Richard Chait reminded each of us that the Board of Trustees is responsible for the governance and stewardship of the institution, and that the president is responsible for the leadership and management of the institution. But that also, in this role, we need to keep in mind that if the institution suffers a failure of leadership and management, the board will fire the president. If the institution suffers a failure of governance and stewardship, the board will fire the president. <laughs> I am fully aware that this day is not about me, but I stand here before you nonetheless. With apologies to all those here today that share my roots in New Jersey, and there are some out there, I quote Don Vito Corleone in the original movie The Godfather. <laughs> He said, so be it. This is the job I've chosen. There's no turning back. <laughs> With the support, goodwill, and prayers of you here today, I am also comforted by the words of a great philosopher we've already heard quoted today, Dr. Seuss, when he said, and will you succeed? Yes, you will indeed. 98 and 3 quarter percent guaranteed. <laughs> and in this job, I'll take those odds. Legacy and promise. Allow me to quote and paraphrase a passage that I have returned to often in the last few months, one that actually Chaplain Brewer referenced this morning in chapel services. From the New Testament, Book of Romans 12, 1 through 8, I take this paraphrase from a new version called the Common English Bible. It says, Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, so that you can discern what God's will is, that which is good and pleasing and mature that we all have gifts that are consistent with God's grace for each of us, but that are different for each of us. If your gift is prophecy, do so in proportion to your faith. If your gift is service to others, do so with devotion. If your gift is teaching, devote your energy and life to the mind. If your gift is encouraging and administering the work of others, do so with the passion of a leader. My life experiences make it clear to me that my gift is to encourage and administer the work of others. And I'm here today to devote my energy to be able to discern what God's will is for the legacy and promise of Greensboro College. I will promise each and every one of you that I will also strive to be, in a more modern sense, what the noted business management author Jim Collins describes as a level five executive. And I quote, level five leaders channel their ego needs away from themselves and into the larger goal of the institution. It is not that level five leaders do not have ego or self-interest, they are incredibly ambitious, but their ambition is first and foremost to the institution, not to themselves. I also promise you today that I will, promise this to the board in particular, that I will heed the lyrics of that beautiful song made famous a few years ago in a duet sung by Sarah Brightman and Andrea Bocelli, that I will know when it is time to say goodbye. Legacy as promise. Allow me to rephrase. Legacy as promise. Greensboro College, a small, private, church-related liberal arts college. Seven words by description, seven words by definition, seven words as commitment. A small, private, church-related liberal arts college. I have already incorporated into my daily vocabulary the touchstone phrases of you belong here and the two signs I had made for my office already noted. 
that it is always all about the students. I've also begun to incorporate the tagline from the new marketing and partnership initiative, combining all of the resources of these seven colleges and universities in Greensboro with the corporate community and with nonprofit leadership called Opportunity Greensboro. Opportunity thrives